Hello and welcome to Adobe Illustrator Shawnee Heights Type Tool. If you will launch Adobe Illustrator and follow along with me. Once Adobe Illustrator has launched, go to File and New to create a new artboard. An artboard is like a piece of paper to work on. Adobe Illustrator Creative Cloud now gives you um, a new document box that shows options and it also shows your recently added or used items. So I've already had an 8.5 by 11. If you need to change that, realize along the right hand side it shows your width and your height. It probably is under points at this time so you might want to change it to pixels here or inches or centimeters or meters. I most commonly use inches. It also gives you the option to change your orientation to portrait or to landscape. It also will allow you to change your number of artboards. So if you are working on a brochure or a pamphlet, this might come in handy. We're going to leave it at one. Your bleed has to do with your outside edges. Later in the semester, um, we will talk about these some more. You can also change from CMYK to RGB. We want to leave it at CMYK, so we're simply going to say create. This gives us a new artboard. Anything that I create out here will not show up when I print it. So realize this is like your desktop, and this is your actual paper you're working on. So the type tool. It can be found in your toolbox, and when I click on it, it will open up a series of other tools. So you can see that there are seven different type tools. Those different type tools um, all work a little differently. The type tool itself is much like a Word document type tool. So we're going to type a few more things here, just like we would in Word. me a minute. Then if I um, take my selection tool and I click on it, it'll bring up a bounding box. This bounding box will allow me, if I hold my shift key, to size it larger. So I can size it up. Um, I find this is one of the easiest ways to size fonts or letters or words in Illustrator. You also could go up to the top where it says point size, which you guys can't see this, um, but it's right up above this. And so I can also change the size here. I think that this is harder because it's hard to determine exactly what size it needs for the space. Um, but you can do it there as well, right beside there. So right above here is my font. And if I highlight that font, I can actually um, scroll through fonts and change the font to different styles. So this, for example, is Pokemon. Um, there, that is one I've downloaded from somewhere, so you guys probably won't readily have that one. Um, so go ahead and try that out. I can also change my text color. So you guys also have this up in the top outside of my recording area. I am going to go to the color picker here and show it to you. So realize you can change your colors in either place. The, this is your fill and this is your stroke. You can switch these out simply by clicking and you can see how now I have a border color and not a, a fill color. I'm going to go ahead and make this larger so you guys can... See. Actually, I'll just make it larger this way. I'll make this larger so you guys can see it easily. Um, we're going to go ahead and switch it back. Go ahead and click on your color picker and it will open this box. I can use this and change any color. Then if you notice this circle, that's just telling me what color I have chose. When I click somewhere else, you can see the top color changes. That shows me what I used to have and what I'm now selected. It also gives me a number down here. So some particular 
logos or companies will ask you for a specific color. You can type that in directly right there and it'll choose the color for you. Go ahead and um, choose any color that you would like and say OK. So now you see that I have a fill color of red. I want to also show you how to use the stroke. So go ahead and double click on there and it tells me I'm going to make a black stroke, which is perfect. Um, and I don't know why it didn't work. Let's try it again. There we go. So now you can see, um, to me, it's a little overpowering with the red. So up in the point size, I can make that point size smaller, or I can make that point size smaller in this case, or larger. I think In this case, I think it needs to be smaller. So make sure you try that out. Then also, I want you guys to try creating a bounding box. So I simply click anywhere and drag and it is set to fill in dummy text. So it filled it all in for me. Go ahead and select your use your selection tool again, which is found in the upper right of your toolbox and change that bounding box. Notice how when you change it, it auto changes the text to fill the space that you've given it. So go ahead and make me a nice little rectangle of some size and then just move it over here out of our way. The next tool that I am going to show you in your toolbox is the area type tool. First, you've got to make an area for it to type into. So right below the type tool, you'll see that there is the shape tool and it's under the rectangle tool. We're going to go ahead and check select a star. So go ahead and get your star and click it anywhere on the screen. It's going to do a fill of black because that's what we have in our color picker. We can simply swap the fill for the stroke. So that's the easiest way to change those out. I'm going to zoom in again a little closer. When I go now to my area type tool, if I click right here, it's going to give me a warning saying this is not going to work. You have to be on a path. So if you notice here, this is an anchor. So everywhere there's a point, that's an anchor. Anywhere there's a line, that's a path. So I can click on anywhere on any of these lines and it would start to allow me to type text. So since I've got that dummy type um, selected, it auto filled again. So you can notice that it brought up this plus sign. That means that there is more text there. I just cannot see it. So when that happens, you have the option to change your text size so that it's much smaller so that you can actually see all the hidden text, which sometimes can get kind of time consuming um, to try and figure out exactly what size it needs to be. So make sure you're careful about noticing how that is filling inside your space before you get a lot of text types like I did. Um, we're going to leave it for now. Um, make sure you guys go ahead and fill it in. I'm going to make it a little bigger and then that way we can see it all. So um, up in the paragraph again, there is, us, there is um, center, a line left, um, a line right, and there's justifies. Go ahead and make sure you try some of those out for me. So do the center one, do the left and right one, and then make sure that you justify it. What Justify will do is it will fill that entire space up so that it goes from edge to edge. So again, make sure that you've given me enough type that I can actually see that it has um, completely filled your space like so. Um, so try the area type tool out. If you want to change the text color or font like we did before, you sure can. The next tool that I'm going to show you is the type on a path. So just like the area type tool, I have to make a path first. So here was our shape tool. Right underneath the shape tool is a new tool in Creative Cloud, which is pretty neat and we'll use later on. But right now we're just going to choose the pencil tool, which is found underneath there. Go ahead and draw me a nice curved line and go ahead and select then the type on a path. Just like before, I have to be on a path. So if I'm out here, it's not going to work. If I'm on an anchor, it's not going to usually work. So make sure you're on a path. It auto filled it. Just like before, it gives me a bounding box that I can stretch and change. So make sure you play with that. 
Then I want you to also try um, typing it on one of these. I would suggest the spiral is what I would like you to use. So just again, just click and it will ask you what size and segment you want it. We're just going to say, okay, we're going to go back to our path and we're going to click again and it auto fills that text again. So try that one out. Then also I want you to try um, filling in a shape. And in this case, I want you to do a circle. So realize I can click Somewhere on my screen, I right click and it'll ask me what I want. If I want a circle, I need to make both of these the same size. So we're going to do two and two inches and it'll auto make me a circle. Just like before it did the fill black, but we went the stroke black. So we'll switch those out. We'll go back to our type on a path tool and we'll just simply click somewhere and it fills it. So now you have some other options. So if you go up to the very top where it says type tool, so up next to file, which again is going to go off my screen, I like the type on a path tool and then I like to choose path options because this pulls up everything that's available to me. I can choose then preview and that gives me a real example of what it's going to look like so that I can see if I even like it. So play with all of these things here. Try the flip and what flip does is just changes it from the outside circle to the inside of the circle and then try these others. I am not real crazy about anybody, any of them but rainbow in a graphic design usage. So when you're done playing make sure you change it back to rainbow and if you want to leave it flipped you can or you can unflip it and go ahead and say okay. The next tool on here is the vertical type tool. Whoops, did something to that. The vertical type tool. Notice that the vertical type tool also gives an area and a path. We are just going to use the vertical one. We're going to come way over here and it's going to dummy text. So it went um, down vertically. So it's pretty simple, self explanatory. I am then going to show you the touch type tool, which I think believe I have to type something first. Yes, I was correct in that. I thought I would try it out. So we're going to just first type something and I'm going to actually type some real words here again. So now when we go back to our touch type tool, I can click on a single letter. And it just like before when we saw a bounding box, it's similar. Now I have kind of an individual bounding box so I can enlarge it. I can stretch it out bigger like so. If you notice when I stretch it out bigger, the entire line changes. So see how far the the is now from the, the E is from the T. So I am going to just select the E. H and then I'm going to move the whole thing over. So I'm changing what's called the kerning. So I'm going to make the kerning closer to the H so it makes more sense. Um, you'll notice up the top that it also gave me this extra clear circle. That allows you to rotate a single letter within a line. So try both of those out and make sure that you also try out changing the kerning so that you can actually read your um, word or sentence or letter. I guess not a letter you wouldn't read, but your text when you're done. Once you have all of these completed for me, then you are going to go ahead and print this out so that um, I can see all of it and that you have it all finished. Thank you.